Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Text Mining Modeling Using Python. So, in previous few lectures, uh, we have started our discussion on how to work with data using Python platform. And uh, specifically, uh, we were able to cover how to uh, work with CSV file, Microsoft Excel files and web APIs as well. Now, uh, we will move out, move to uh, certain other aspects of uh, working with data. So, let us start with filtering out missing data. Uh, so, we have certain uh, methods available uh, in, in various packages in Python uh, which can be really useful in this. Uh, certain certain uh, examples, certain aspects we have been covering in previous lectures as well. Now, here in this uh, data management context, we will go through some of the uh, you know new uh, you know aspects as well. So, let us talk about filtering out missing data. So, first thing using drop any method. So, uh, we will need to uh, you know import uh, you know the required library modules here. So, first line is about that. Uh, now, you can see there uh, you know that uh, we are specifying uh, you know n a n as n a and uh, you can see this. Uh, so, let, later on wherever uh, we are uh, you know uh, wherever uh, n a n is there it, it can be used as n a there. So, let us take the example of the series 1. So, we have this uh, we are using the series function to create this uh, series object here these 5 values. So, let me run this. and. Uh, if I want to drop all the NAs that are present in this series, uh, then I can call this drop NA uh, method here. And uh, out of the five elements that we have in the series, one object, uh, two are NA elements, two are NAs. So, those will be dropped. So, if I run this, and you can see in the output that only three elements with the indices 0 to 4 are there. So, therefore, uh, the remaining two uh, you know, elements with NA values, they have been dropped. Now, uh, there could be another approach to achieve the same thing dropping NAs. Uh, in this approach, we can use the not null method and combine it with the Boolean indexing. Uh, so, you can see in this uh, next line of code in the series 1 within bracket, uh, we are passing an expression which is actually called to this method not null. So, series 1 dot not, not null. So, we will get a Boolean output here uh, which will indicate uh, you know which uh, which will indicate uh, which of the elements are not null and uh, those would be true. So, only those would be kept in the output. So, if I run this, we would be able to achieve the same output. So, if you compare output 183 and 184, they are same. So, these are two ways either drop any method or using not null method and uh, you know Boolean indexing to achieve this thing, you know, dropping NAs. Now, let us, uh, you know, uh, 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 now let us take the scenario when we are dealing with data frame. So, let us uh, take create this data frame df5 and uh, let us uh, let me run this. So, again here uh, again in this case also uh, in this data frame we have lots of NAN and we can use a drop NA method again to drop uh, you know those uh, you know those values. So, if I run df5 dot drop NA and you can see I am left with just uh, one row because uh, most of the other rows they had uh, they had an an so therefore all the, all of them have been you know dropped so uh, when we call in this fashion drop an a uh, any row having an an is going to be you know dropped now uh, we can also have a uh, few uh, variations of uh, drop any method where we can specify that uh, drop only those uh, uh, rows where all the elements are NAs. So, for that we can use this how argument. So, in the drop NA method we can pass on how argument the, the keyword argument uh, uh, it is a keyword argument and we can specify all. So, uh, only the rows which have all the NAs only those are going to be dropped. So, if you look at the output uh, we had just one you know uh, we had just one row with the index 2 uh, that has been dropped because it had all the NANs. Now, uh, just like uh, dropping rows, we can also drop columns. So, for that we will have to specify axis as 1. So, uh, uh, let us uh, you know create uh, let us create another you know column here d f 5 and 3. So, uh, we will uh, column filled with uh, all, all, the, all the values will be 8. So, let us create this column and uh, now we can go ahead and drop n a. Uh, and uh, x is uh, 1. So, all the columns with the NA values uh, they would be dropped. So, in this case we will be left with just one column which we have just now added. 
So, if you look at the output 190, then you can see that just uh, one column has been you know is left there. Now, let us add another uh, column. Now, this one is the uh, NA column here. So, if I assign df 54 uh, equal to NA, then we will have another column here. Now, if I want to drop uh, you know this column here. So, so uh, in this case, we are demonstrating uh, uh, is, uh, the column uh, which is having all the NA and values. So, again we can use the how argument and specify all and therefore, the column the only column with all the you know NA values only they would be dropped. So, we can call this uh, method in this fashion if I run this and uh, you can see that column uh, within column index 4 uh, is gone there. Now, let us move to the uh, few other aspects. Now, filtering filtering out rows uh, with less than a specified number of columns without any values. So, this kind of uh, you know uh, you know filtering is also possible. So, uh, especially in the uh, especially in the kind of data where where time is quite important and uh, we might have this kind of uh, data frame df6. Uh, so, let me first create this data frame and you can see in the output 193 we have 3 columns 0, 1, 2 and uh, uh, in the column 1 and 2 uh, co column with index 1 and 2 there are a lot more NANs. So, uh, if we want to specify uh, if we want to filter uh, the rows here. So, focus is on rows we would like to filter rows. Uh, with less than a <coughs> less than a specified number of columns without any values. So, uh, uh, if uh, in this case uh, let us take uh, you know uh, let us take the rows where uh, at least uh, you know uh, uh, the columns uh, without any values uh, should be at least 2. So, in that case if I uh, how do I implement this for this we have this stress argument. So, in the drop any method we can specify thrust equal to 2. So, in this uh, output 193 uh, let us see which uh, of the rows are going to be dropped. So, so if you compare you can see uh, the row number 0 and row number 1 there uh, if we uh, th these are the rows where we have 2 NANs. So, therefore, we will be left with just one uh, uh, you know will be just uh, left with the one column without any n. So, therefore, those rows have been dropped because out of uh, you know only two columns uh, two columns uh, as per the thrust argument which we have specified two columns should, ha should not have any n values. So, two columns should not have any n values. So, therefore, uh, the first and second row would be dropped. Now, let us move to the next aspect this is about filling in the missing data. So, for this we can use uh, fill NA method. So, this uh, method can really be used to replace NAs with zeros. Uh, similar exercise we have done before also. So, here in this context we will do it again. So, you can see we are calling for the data frame df6 dot fill NA and specifying the value uh, there 0 which is going to replace any NAs that are there in df6. So, if I run this and you can see in the column 1 and column 2 initial few values where we had NANs now they have been replaced with zeros. Now, instead of uh, replacing with just one value we can also have a dict object which can indicate uh, you know different uh, replacement value for different columns. So, let us say column 1 we would like to replace NANs with 0.5 and column 2 will like to replace NANs with 0. So, we can specify that uh, using a dict object. So, if you look at this line of code df6 dot fill na and within that parenthesis we have a dict object uh, for column 1 uh, we are we have uh, uh, you know indicated the value uh, 0.5 for column 2 the value is 0. So, if I run this and if you look at the output here 196 column 1 and 2. So, column 1 the uh, you know uh, first 4 rows we had NANs and all of them have been replaced with 0.5 and uh, you know column with the index 2 we had uh, 2 NANs at the, at the top of this column and they have been replaced with 0. So, in this fashion for different columns using a dict object we can you know replace with different values. Now, if you want to uh, do a in place in place replacement in the data frame itself. So, for that we have in place arguments. So, that can be used. So, uh, let us look uh, let us uh, have a look at this particular line of code here 
uh, on the on the on the left hand side I have underscore because this is in place uh, uh, this is to indicate that this is an in place replacement uh, uh, you know in place modification that we are going to perform then we are calling df6 dot fill na and uh, we would like to uh, you know re replace all the na's with 0 and in place is true. So, uh, the changes would be reflected in the D df6 data frame itself. So, if I run this and uh, if you look have a look at the df6 so now in this case uh, df6 itself has been modified. So, this is in place replacement. Uh, sim similar uh, examples we have demonstrated in previous lectures as well. Now, uh, let us talk about another aspect which is interpolation method. So, apart from uh, you know uh, you know filling any you know values with you know uh, by specifying a certain value or using a dict object to uh, for different columns different values. So, that kind of uh, arrangement uh, we can ha have another kind of arrangement where uh, we can use uh, interpolation method like f fill and fill these uh, you know uh, fill some of these values. So, uh, let us have a look at this data frame df7 and uh, let me run some of these lines and you can have a look at the uh, data frame here. So, if you look at column with index 1 and column with index 2 here. Uh, so, bottom values they are filled with NANs. So, uh, we can actually use the method f fill uh, to actually fill these values. So, f fill is something that we have used before. So, it is it is uh, it is it, it is a interpolation method. So, in the fill NA uh, method itself we can we have an argument method for actually you know uh, using uh, these kind of methods to fill values fill NA values. So, uh, in this case uh, we are specifying f fill. So, if I run this you can have a look at the uh, you know uh, column with index 1 and column with index uh, 2 the bottom values where we had the NANs uh, they have been replaced with the with the, the, the last value that we had. So, uh, the you know uh, so that kind of interpolation has been applied uh, in this particular case. Now, uh, we can also limit this interpolation that we just did for that we can use another argument which is limit and we can specify the number of times this uh, interpolation using f fill can actually be uh, used. So, we can specify this. So, if I run this again you can see that only twice uh, this interpolation has happened in uh, column with the index 1 and column with the index 2 and therefore, in the column with the index 1 where we had 4 NANs only 2 NANs have been interpolated with these values and 2 are left as NANs itself. Now, uh, a more common method uh, for you know uh, filling uh, you know NA values especially uh, from the statistical point of view or you know data mining uh, point of view. Uh, we can uh, replace uh, these NAN values with the mean values. So, for that uh, you know in the fill NA method we can we can uh, pass on the mean value here as a replacement for NA. So, in the parenthesis you can see we can uh, pass on df7 dot mean. So, the mean of uh, the data frame that is being passed here. So, if I run this uh, all the NANs they have been uh, replaced uh, with the mean uh, for that particular column. So, column 1 a different mean, column 2 a different mean. So, in this fashion those NANs are going to be replaced. Now, uh, let us talk about another data manage, uh, management aspect which is about the uh, removing duplicates. So, many rows uh, are going to have uh, you, know, uh, you know duplicate you know they would be duplicate of some other rows. So, how do we get rid of uh, uh, you know uh, you know just keep one instance of uh, those rows and uh, remove other uh, duplicates. So, let us take an example here. So, we will take this data frame df8 and you can have a look at this. Uh, there are two columns k1 and k2 here and we have same observations in this case. So, uh, to remove uh, you know uh, duplicate rows uh, you can uh, first have a look at the output 203 if you look at the row number row with the index 5 and row with the index uh, 6. Uh, so, for k1 column and for the k2 column you can see 2 4 2 4. So, uh, these rows are actually being repeated here. Uh, so, uh, so, one of the row, row is a duplicate row here. So, we can uh, you know uh, remove this row using uh, you know duplicated method here. So, we can call this df8 dot duplicated. Uh, so, what uh, this will do this will uh, you know find duplicate rows and it will return uh, a boolean value whether uh, it is duplicate or not. 
So, if I run uh, duplicated on DF8, you can see uh, in the in the row with the index uh, 6, it is returning as true. So, therefore, this particular last row is actually a duplicate row. Now, how do, we, how do uh, I drop uh, this duplicate row for that? I can use drop underscore duplicates uh, you know uh, method here. So, we can call df8 dot drop underscore duplicates here and uh, if I run this, uh, you can see the row with the index 6 is actually gone. So, that duplicate. So, the last instance, last uh, instance of this uh, you know duplicate row is actually gone and the first in uh, first instance of the that particular row is being uh, you know uh, kept in the data frame. Now, uh, sometimes you might be required to drop replicate rows based on one particular columns uh, instead of all the columns. So, one thing is that uh, all the uh, you know for, for cert certain rows all the columns have same values. So, that is one thing sometimes you would just like to focus on one column and if any value is repeating there. Uh, we would like to uh, we would like to consider that also as a duplicate instance of rows and therefore uh, we would like to you know drop those rows so how do we perform this so for uh, for that let's first add another uh, column here in df8 data frame so uh, you can have a look at this output df8 207 we have added another column v1 and now, uh, uh, what we are going to do now, we will drop duplicate rows based on column K1, the first column. And here, uh, you can see uh, we have two distinct uh, values here, 1 and 2, and they are being repeated many times. So, if I, uh, you know, plan to drop, uh, you know, duplicate uh, rows based on this particular column, uh, we will be just uh, left with just, uh, because there are just two distinct values, we will be left with just, uh, you know, two rows there. So, if I call df8 dot, uh, dot uh, drop underscore duplicates and within the parentheses I am passing the uh, column uh, which is to be used for dropping uh, the duplicate rows. And if I run this, uh, you can see in the output 208, we are left with just two rows because in the k1 we had just two distinct values. So, therefore, first instance uh, if you will look at the values here, compare uh, the output 207 and 208. You can see the uh, and you can have a look at the index also. So, the row index 0 and row index 1 has been uh, have been kept and other rows have been removed here because the duplicate wa duplication was based on one particular column rather than all the columns. Now, if you want to change the behavior of retaining uh, uh, a particular instance uh, in case of a, in case of duplicate rows. So, that also we can do using uh, keep argument. So, in this keep argument, we can specify uh, certain uh, certain values uh, to indicate which instance we would like to keep it here. So, for example, if we would like to uh, keep the last instance instead of the first one which is the default behavior, we can indicate the same in the keep argument. So, if you look at the code here, df8 dot drop underscore duplicates and uh, we are using k1 uh, comma k2 here and uh, uh, will uh, so uh, one thing is we talked about dropping based on one column we can also drop based on two columns so here k1 and k2 we are using these two columns and then whatever duplicates we are able to find we'll just we'll keep the last instance inst instead of the first uh, instance there so uh, if i run this and you can have a look at uh, the values here if you look at 0 1 2 3 4 so, row with the index 5 is actually gone and uh, uh, row uh, with the index 6 is uh, you know kept there. So, 5 and 6 they were duplicate rows uh, and uh, you know so uh, one of uh, and duplicate based on two columns k1 and k2. Uh, so, both had val these value 2 and 4. So, the, these were duplicate rows, but we have kept the last instance instead of the first instance. So, index uh, row with the index 5 is gone instead of uh, index 6. So, to demonstrate uh, to compare uh, uh, the results you can see here drop uh, you know duplicates if I drop using these two columns you can see the output here. So, the default behavior row index 5 is kept and the previous output as you saw that uh, row index uh, 6 row with the index 6 is kept over there. Now, let us move on to the another aspect or another aspect that we typically you know have to deal with while working with data 
is uh, to perform transformation certain data transformation based on mapping certain mappings. So, uh, uh, let us take a few examples here. So, let us focus on data transformation which are, which are based on values. Uh, so, in this case first example that we are taking is about mapping of uh, a certain uh, distinct agro food products to the agricultural crop. So, if you look at the data frame that we are uh, trying to you know uh, will, that will create here. Uh, in this uh, we have food, uh, we are going to have food column and with these uh, values atta, maida, atta, sugar, good, atta, sugar, dalia, basin. So, if you look at few of the values are repeating and uh, then we have ounces uh, of uh, those uh, food items. Uh, so, let me uh, first create this data frame, you can have a look at these two columns food and ounces. Now, we have another object dict uh, object here dict 1 where uh, we have uh, created a mapping key value combination where uh, each of these values that we just talked about uh, uh, their mapping is done with their agricultural crop source. So, each of these agro products they have been mapped with their agricultural crop, crop here. So, atta is, is actually you know is, is, is uh, processed from wheat and maida is uh, also uh, comes from wheat and sugar from sugar cane good also sugar cane dalia wheat. Uh, wheat and basin chana dal. So, uh, this kind of mapping we have here. So, if I run this. So, uh, what we have now is one data frame where we have two columns and values and then we have a dict object where we have the mapping. So, can we transform the data frame based on the mappings uh, that we have and in this transformation what we are actually going to do is we are going to add a column in the data frame which will indicate the crop. So, for any value we would be adding a column with the crop. So, instead of manually entering uh, uh, entering the uh, actual crop source, uh, we can use this mapping to actually uh, automate this uh, process here, uh, which can be really useful in a uh, large data set context. So, uh, here uh, what we are doing you can have a look at uh, this code here we are using a map method, uh, data frame map method to extract mapping from the dict object. So, df9 crop—this is so in this fashion when we indicate we'll be adding a new column, and df9 uh, food. So we are using the values of this column, food column, and then uh, uh, we are applying mapping based on dict1. So if I run this, we'll end up with uh, one additional column crop, and the appropriate uh, you know uh, crop source for the value for the values in the food column uh, has been added there. So, in this fashion we are able to transform our data set uh, based on certain mappings. Now, uh, let us talk about uh, certain other transformation for example, replacing values using replace method. So, to demonstrate this we will have the series 2 object here. So, let me first uh, define this series. So, you can see uh, you know we have certain uh, higher uh, negative values in the higher in the magnitude sense. So, uh, some of these values can be sentinel, val sentinel values for missing data just like uh, NA and NANs. Sometimes the analyst and researcher they might also use some of these values to indicate the missing data as well, missing data. So, uh, we can replace uh, these values, these sentinel values with the NA and NAs which is actually the regular uh, you know uh, regular sent sentinel marker for missing value. So, we can use replace method series 2 dot replace and we can replace uh, all the instances of minus uh, 999 with np.9 uh, that is nan. So, if I run this and if you look at the series 2 output here uh, the, all the places where we had minus 999. So, those have been replaced here. Uh, so, if we want to do multiple uh, we want to replace multiple values uh, like this. I, so, uh, there also we can use replace method. So, you can see next line of code series 2 dot replace and uh, we are passing a list of uh, these values which you would like to replace with NAN. So, if I run this you can see uh, more instances of NAN because uh, uh, the other second value has also been replaced. Now, uh, we can also just like uh, other examples that we have demonstrated uh, we can have different replacement uh, for each value here. So, in this case in the replace method also we can have uh, two argument. 
uh, first one is, uh, have, is the list of values that uh, sentinel values that you would like to replace and then the uh, second list is uh, you know uh, about uh, uh, about the values which are going to uh, rep which are which are going to be used as a replacement here as a substitute here so if i run this code and uh, you would see that minus 999 has been replaced with nan and minus 1000 has been replaced with minus 1 so different replacement for each value can also be implemented using replace method itself uh, the same thing we can also achieve using a dict uh, you know uh, kind of mapping that uh, uh, we have used the similar approach in other examples also here so you can see uh, here also we are having this kind of example so same output now let's talk about the uh, renaming index uh, label so uh, we have we have used uh, you know various example uh, examples in this context also now in the data data context uh, we'll again demonstrate this so uh, let's take this data frame so in this data frame we have uh, four columns uh, with the uh, with the names 1 2 3 4 and we have three rows with the cities delhi mumbai bangalore and values uh, in this data frame so what we are going to do is we are going to work with uh, the index labels that we have so we are going to transform some of these some of these index label so uh, uh, let's have a function f1 lambda function where uh, which uh, can actually be used uh, to actually uh, create the upper case version of uh, these index names. Uh, so, let me first define this function f1 and what we can do is we can use the index attribute for this data frame df10.index and then apply this map method call this map method and apply this function f1 so that we are able to change the index name as per the functionality that we have defined in function f1. So, if I call this uh, you can have a look at the output uh, 221 here you can see daily mumbai and bangalore just uh, three characters have been kept and all in the upper cases so in this fashion uh, we have done slicing uh, of those uh, you know index names because some of these names were uh, slightly uh, containing more uh, characters so uh, we have just kept the first three characters using uh, slicing colon 3 and then uh, use the upper cases of those uh, characters so in this fashion the index will actually be changed uh, so uh, let's take another example so let me first uh, change the index uh, that we just talked about so you can see in the output 222 uh, the index uh, row index name uh, names have have changed now uh, in the next example uh, what we'll do is we'll demonstrate uh, rename methods so we'll take this df10 that you can see here and uh, next thing we'll do we'll call this uh, rename method which can also be used to uh, uh, change these index names so in this if you look at uh, we are calling the, we are calling this method for df10 this uh, data frame object and the first argument we are uh, for, that is for the index and there we are uh, we are we are applying this str.title uh, you know uh, uh, function here so it will actually change uh, the uh, row index uh, as per the title format that is typically there where the first character is alphabetical and others are in small uh, lower cases first one is in upper cases and uh, then for the column uh, index name we are calling this str dot upper function so it will uh, convert all the characters into the upper cases so if i run this uh, you can see uh, in the output 224 uh, all the index name whether row and uh, column they have been changed in one go in this fashion so we can also uh, use dict mapping uh, with the rename method so again let's take the example of df10 uh, this is the uh, current uh, current well current names for uh, you know index names for, for df10 so you can see again we are calling rename method and for the index we can are specifying a dict object for del uh, we are mapping this uh, as in the first and for columns the three uh, column with the column uh, name three we are replacing it with the theme uh, so uh, let me run this and let's have a look at so at the output 226 you can compare this with the 225 and you can see the changes there so dict object uh, dict mapping can also be used to perform this kind of uh, this kind of renaming there now uh, uh, we can also go for in place modification using rename method so for that we have this in place argument 
So, uh, again df10 and in the rename method you can have a look that index and columns are the same values like previous example and we have used in place argument now whatever changes are done they would be reflected in df10 itself. So, you can see in the output here that all those changes have been reflected. So, uh, with this we would like to uh, stop this lecture and in the next one we will start our discussion on uh, working with data and we will specifically we will talk about winning of continuous variable which is an important task in the analytics uh, you know in general. Uh, thank you.